Someone's cursing my lord Late night lunch Someone's puffling my lord Late night lunch Someone's growing my lord Late night lunch Oh lord Late night lunch This is a post-Watershed production. Welcome, people, to a late-night large streaked with thunder, buffeted by rain and struck by lightning as it runs after its tent that's just blown away. I am your mighty spork, and next to me is your tent-peg mallet, Mike Large. Cheers, pal. All right, guys? Late-night large is going outside. We are going outside. Tonight's theme will be the great outdoors in all its glory. Or, or not so great outdoors. In yeah, in all its squalor. In, in all its squalor. <laughs> but it is great. Yeah, of course. Mike. Aaron. The, the great outdoors, what does it mean to you? Uh, the great outdoors. Does it represent adventure or Yeah, man. Yeah? Adventure like I'm not type of adventures that really I still haven't been on and really want to. Shame on you. Yeah, there there is something to be said about getting back to nature. It really kind of reminds you what it's like to be human again, like mm. real human, like back in the day when your survival was uh, based on how you could survive in your environment, taking what you needed. Okay, maybe saying I'd love to live in those times, have lived in those times, <laughs> might you know people probably pick a lot of holes in that. Yeah, but I genuinely think it. I'd like to do it for a bit. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I think it'd be awesome. I'd love it. That's, yeah, good. Me, hunter-gatherer, wicked. Yeah, it would, it would give you a sense of purpose, wouldn't I've, it? I get up every day. It's me. Fresh challenge. It's so me. <laughs> so you. It is. Okay. Sleep in the wild, getting, like, dirty and running around and, like... Yeah, shitting it Battering things and, like, just... Yeah, battering thing. Yeah, just wrestling bears. Wrestling, yeah, shit like that. that I, was, <laughs> I was made for that. Really? That's what I was. I was made for the great outdoors. Okay, Mike. <laughs> well, I'll uh, I'll take your word for that. Survival of the fittest in the great outdoors, mate. I'm fit. I'm strong. <laughs> I'm quick. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've run away from something chasing me. Not that I would run away. Do you know what I mean, I just turn around and give it a big right hand. But right. So if I left you alone, I don't know, in the in the backwoods of. North America I'd come back a week later and you'd be uh, I don't know wearing a bear skin maybe not a bear skin (laughs) (laughs) maybe lots of little squirrel skins (laughs) squirrel skin I don't know know how I'd catch them fuckers true I don't think I don't think squirrels would taste very nice either I'd eat it though see I'll I'll eat anything if it's meat I'll eat it cheers great nice Mm, one well okay fair enough I'd say I'd love to do stuff like that (laughs) Yeah, and you could always uh, you could always pilfer like some seasoning and other things from people's houses. I mean, no one's going to complain about losing like a thing of salt or anything, are they? No. If a meat is particularly you know, nasty. Okay, so the <laughs> the great outdoors means that to you, Mike. Yeah. Evoking yeah. the spirit of uh, spirit of man. Do you like camping? I do. Do you go to many festivals to camp, or do you, are you Not one of those often. people who prefers to like just go with a few mates to a campsite, or or I don't know the misses? Well, the last time, I, yeah, yeah. So, uh, not the last time I was camping was um, frisbee tournament. Oh, okay. Who are you with? Uh, some puffins. Because <laughs> it's funny because somebody uh, somebody once said that you were uh, camp as a row tent. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Shucks. I did have a like a bit of a bad like shoulder area from I guess how I've been sleeping <laughs> on the hard floor and that. You puffin. But I didn't care. I got up and I went and I, <laughs> you know, it didn't bother me. I love it. I gotta be honest. Uh, other other than the time when I was rushed to hospital, but that's a different story. Puffin. Uh, <laughs> No, other than the time I was rushed to hospital was because uh, I already had... I was suffering from pretty bad asthma and I slept in damp conditions, which is the worst thing you can do. But other than that, when I've been fit and healthy, uh, I'm actually remarkably good at sleeping in tents. 
Right, I get up, and obviously there's always a bit of stiffness from sleeping on hard ground, but I've there's never... There's always a bit of stiffness when I get up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even need to put up your tent, you've already got a tent pile. True story. But the great outdoors is different, obviously. One of the attractions, Mike, I'm guessing, is because there's not that many people around. Yeah. Just you and nature. Yeah, so fending off the advances of, what do you say amorous bears or <laughs> trying to or chasing bears sorry yeah because you're and feeling particularly amorous and, and <laughs> 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 Mike god I was going to say something innocent like they'd swipe your picnic basket <laughs> I'd say you, you disgust me oh spare me but obviously you don't just you don't need to just be in a tent did you ever used to go on any camping holidays like you know when you were in a little caravan with your parents or yeah 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 one well, of those they're fun yeah, not bad. They're pretty cool. I, you know, I wouldn't make a lifestyle choice of it. Obviously, I wouldn't make a very good traveller, but it's not. It's no. not. It's quite cool for the odd holiday. Yeah, you know, I enjoy all that stuff. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you, yeah. You, you, to be honest, you, you're a man. M- most men uh, would like to think, at least, that they could get by surviving in the great outdoors without complaining too much. Mm. If you get what I mean. Yeah, I'd be fine. I don't think men have a problem with shitting in a hole in the ground. Hell no. Or even, you know, shitting in the bag and throwing it when you're Sometimes I leave my bathroom just to go outside, dig a hole and take a shit in it. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously, in a, in a few years, when uh, you've had kids or whatever, you uh, tell them there's buried treasure in the garden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you see that bit in the corner of the garden? With, uh, yeah, that's it, with the, with the stick sticking out of the ground. <laughs> Looks like it shouldn't be there. That's it, yeah. Daddy's treasure. Go, yeah, yeah. Go there's, get there's, there's treasure. There's treasure under there. <laughs> oh dear. Why would you taunt kids like that, Mike? Because it's bloody funny. If you're a, if you're really an adventurous sort, it does represent a playground more than anything else. So many things to make and do. So, Mike, have you got any? Uh, have you got any humorous camping stories for us? I thought that would be a, a funny place to go. Oh my god! I know. I've just, I've just thought. I know you got. I know you've got a couple. <laughs> I think I've heard a couple of them before. So, yeah. So I won't steal steal your thunder <laughs> for that. I remember when I went to Wake Stop camping oh, yeah. with uh, Alex and Jordan. That was good times. Oh yeah. Pitched yeah. up. Obviously, some birds saw me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I come for a pitch up next to us. Oh yeah. A few birds in that round. I bet they peed all around your tent. You'd be. I I did ask them to. Um, they looked to me strange. <laughs> As I can't imagine why. I'm sure you'll be su- surprised to hear. Although they were attractive, no, okay, a couple of them were attractive uh, young ladies. I didn't actually put one through any of them. <laughs> oh, you, didn't, you were... mean you mean you didn't hammer a tent peg through them? <laughs> I, I ge- no, genuinely, I didn't actually go through any of them. But they were really young. <laughs> I see. Okay. As in, I, I, not sure I'd have gone to jail, but you know, maybe I, s- s- there'd have been a bit of guilt on my conscience. No, we know that wouldn't. Have <laughs> no, <laughs> um, you know, grass on the pitch, play ball. Oh my! I'm just saying. But it's no, it's, it's something about camping. Like, if you go with your mates, the camaraderie it, bring, it bring, brings you closer. Yeah. I think you know you're sleeping. Outside with someone, you're waking up, you're seeing them as soon as they, as soon as you get up, and they're you're saying, seeing each yeah, other like they're saying, "What the hell are you doing, still, my sleeping bag?" Like? <laughs> still got your eyes like half open. You both look like shit. You've just woken up. You're all like smelly, whatever. Yeah, you're not wearing just, any pants. You see, like, how did that happen? Yeah, well, I normally try not to wear pants. Um, <laughs> but you know, you, you see a different side to people. It brings you closer. I mean, when I went that particular time with like, Alex and Jordan, it wouldn't necessarily have that effect because I was already like. Well, I'm already really close to both of them, so mm. it it wasn't like you know I've never seen neither of them waking up before <laughs> <laughs> with a sore ass. Um, <laughs> it it can have that effect for people, you know, it brings you closer. Grey outdoors can do that, I think. You're probably right. I'm definitely right. I'm always right. Do you think? Yeah, but also, do you think there's somebody to be said surely for the lack of distraction as well? Because obviously, when you're in the pub club arcade anywhere in the urban area there's always lots of distractions if someone comes around you might go straight on the xbox 
yeah. get drinking in the great outdoors play you, cards. you've got whatever you've got on you but really your only source of entertainment is each other yeah you, you tell stories you joke with each other you uh, you you play ridiculous games that you would never think about playing soggy you... biscuit I've heard about that with you three the funny thing is I heard you always lose <laughs> On purpose. Yeah. Well, I'd never lose to that. I'd, I'd never lose to them too if it wasn't on purpose, <laughs> would I? No, of course not, mate. Oh. To be honest, I know it sounds really lame and corny. It, it does get you back in touch with your humanity, like what, it, what it's like to be human. Yeah. Just entertaining yourself with your own mind and with the mind of people around you, and like you say, when you want to when you want to eat something, you don't necessarily think, "Oh, I'll stick in the microwave." or I'll just buy it from a kiosk or a kebab shop, you actually start thinking, you know, should I cook it on the stove? Should I cook us up some food on the stove? Things like that. It, you know, life skills. It's yeah. great for that sort of thing. And you might even get to the stage where you think, you have well, fun doing it. You, yeah, you actually enjoy it. Whereas at home, you know, you, you be like, fuck, it's a chore. Oh, what a chore. Anyway, what I was trying to say is, you know, you might even get to washing your clothes in the brook or something. Yeah. What yeah. about you then, Aaron? Come on. Clapping oh stories. God. Well, the funniest ones, Rob, are always the cropperty ones. And Alex Rodini is usually involved in some way. Because he's a bloody puffin. <laughs> I remember uh, possibly the funniest incident I can remember was the uh, tit for tat between Alex Rodini and Jacob Karate. Alex has always been a bit of a provocative puffin. Yes, he's a right arsehole. He, uh, he, likes to, he likes to have little digs at people, play pranks on people, try and wind them up. You know, sometimes it's quite funny. Uh, other times, it ra- it strays into the realms of abuse, like when he's uh, shouting at random old women on on barges passing by to get a rat out and stuff like this. But there was one particular occasion between Alex Rodini and Jacob Karate where uh, Jacob, who uh, who can also be hilariously funny, but sometimes just loses his head. This was one of those occasions because Alex, for reasons which we still don't know for sure, uh, on pretty much the last day, I think, of the festival, just randomly hurled Jacob's new camping seat into the canal. (laughs) It was a good one as well. It wasn't just one of those three-legged things that you just fold out and just, you know, kind of crouch on. It was like a full back armrest. Uh, I think it had a little cup holder as well. And for some reason, Alex just saw fit to hurl it into the canal. Jacob didn't respond very favourably to this. And then Alex Alex went to bed that night in his tent to find that Jacob had soaked, I think, his pillow and most of his sleeping bag in Bailey's. All I'm going to say is, <laughs> what a waste of Bailey's. <laughs> what a waste what, of booze. Exactly. As Mike would say, Bailey's is there to get young women drunk and highly suggestible. Yes, if you're gonna get, you know, if dampen you're gonna his soak someone, piss on it. Exactly, if you're gonna soak piss on his stuff, marinate it in your own urine, or even better, semen. Both concoction, Both. and then take a S- shit in his pillow. Oh, I was gonna say shit in the middle of the pillow, semen on the surface of the pillow, and the sleeping bag just soaked in, soaked in piss. Get your stinking rat out! It's late night, large. Mike, we're talking about the great outdoors. Yes, we are. How are you on wilderness survival? Top boy, aren't I? <laughs> do you uh, do you watch many of those wilderness survival documentaries or? Programs? I advise them on the making. Oh, <laughs> of course, right? Okay. Yeah. When game ears doesn't know what to do, uh, he gives me a call. He grows, he grows. So, what would happen if a grizzly bear got in Bear Grylls' grill? Uh, he'd ring me up and be like, "Shit, there's a bear in my grill." Uh, I'd go down and deck it. Okay, just just wanted to make sure there. Are you a fan of people like Ray Mears and Bear Grylls? Bear Grylls. <laughs> Not really. What about Steve Irwin? I mean, God rest his soul. Yeah, I liked him. Yeah. Yeah, I liked him more than the others. He was great, wasn't he? He was great. Especially when he rolled on the back of a croc. Yeah, top boy. Held, held their jaw shut. Decent, fair play to him. No, he We've got uh, some cojones. Had some cojones. Yeah. It it was brilliant the way he went out though, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> what a legend. Of all the dangerous creatures that he'd mess with, and he got finished by a stingray. <laughs> so, um, bless him. God rest his soul. Steve Irwin. 
Anyway, we'll talk about wilderness survival. So, Mike, seriously, if you're out in the great outdoors, and obviously this isn't going to happen in the UK, we'll talk about, I don't know, in the wilderness of somewhere, somewhere else. in North America or, or something. Okay, say you uh, you come across, I don't know, a timber wolf. Is that gonna uh, is that gonna finish you? <laughs> or are you gonna be caught? Really? So how would you, how would you defend yourself against this? Depends how aggressive it was. If it you know if it's just come bawling at me like straight away, just legging at me, head on, then you know I'm I'm gonna deliver a big right hand. <laughs> In the form of an uppercut, probably. <laughs> um, when it eventually comes down with snow on it. <laughs> um, You'll reach in its mouth and pull its skeleton out? Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. And then I'll eat it. Just wanted to be sure about that. And then I'll eat it. Yeah, raw. So raw. Through its fur. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we've uh, we've cleared that up, Mike. Because uh, legend has it that you uh, like to go salmon fishing. You like Dream to... A gro- groomer. groomer has it that you like to go salmon fishing. You like to basically you like to get right in a, a grizzly bear's grill. Yeah, is it do. grizzly bears that do that or another type of bear? Brown bear, yeah, whatever brown. it is. Brown yes. bear, probably brown bear. Yeah. So you yeah you basically stand right next to them and um basically try and steal the fish from their mouths. Yeah. Is that true? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. They don't like it, but <laughs> what are they going to do about it? So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting. Sometimes I like to, um, you know, obviously kids like to you throw a ball up and you hit it with a bat or whatever. You know, you don't have to necessarily be playing something like cricket or rounders. You know, yeah. you just that sort of thing. Sometimes I like to, uh, I like to swing something at them as they leap out of the water and, uh, oh, and get yeah. them that way. Just hit them. With it. Okay. And obviously when they land on the on the dry land on the other side. All oh, right. Okay. I'll go pick them all up. Have you ever gone fishing before? Like yeah. re- real fishing, I mean. Well, as opposed to fake fishing. <laughs> real fishing with a rod as opposed to pretending to be a bear and snatch it out of the water with your bare hand. Yes, I've been fishing, okay. yeah. Yeah? How are you? Uh, not bad. I must just say so. Not amazing, I'm not pro. Let me do that again. How were you at it? Because I think, I think I just uh, clipped how? my consonants so bad it went. How were you at it? How, how were you at it? How, how was I at it? I want to enunciate. Oh, is that? No, I was good. I was good. No, it was alright, yeah. You catch any big ones? Uh, oh, I always catch the big ones. <laughs> no, uh. I, sorry, I, I, I heard it's always tiddlers. <laughs> a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> they, they often get thrown back, don't they, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> thrown back. And you see monsters? Well, I've got a bit of a monster. Wee. Or at least that's what she said. No, I've not caught any sea monsters, no. Nor have well, I seen any. Maybe next time. So, so I've seen a few monsters in my time, but haven't we all? Not, not in the sea. Under the sea, no go on. <laughs> There'll be no accusations. Are you the kind of person who would be confident if you're out in the wild and you're stranded, of just relying on your wits, getting a big stick and finding it down to a point? Would you be confident that you could, you could uh, get yourself through a few nights before you find your way? Civilization. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd do that fine. Because, of course, the big problem with the great outdoors, probably the only problem, is the same thing. I mean, it's the opposite side of the benefits. Benefits, you don't have to run into, you know, you don't get people in your grill all the time. You can just get back to nature, in touch with the earth. The bad part is you don't get any of the positive parts of civilization, as in medical assistance, people with food people will you know give you shelter and stuff like that so you know sometimes bad things can happen we've all seen deliverance have you seen deliverance mike i was actually in deliverance oh yeah oh you were the guy <laughs> playing the banjo yeah <laughs> i recognize you actually Did it cheers, in yeah. your younger days yeah thanks yeah i wish we had a pan version of deliverance shielding banjos classic uh, yeah, we've all seen Deliverance, so you know you might stumble into the wrong kind of great outdoors and meet the uh, it's the right type. meet the uh, the redneck, or you know you might run into uh, you might run into wrong turn territory as well, the old uh, backwards hillbilly mutant super freaks who uh, of ice. also happen to be cannibals. Obviously, <laughs> they always are because who can afford to be fussy when you're living in that kind of environment? You can't just pop out from Mars Bar or a Twix. No, not looking at like that. 
<laughs> looking like that. <clears throat> Dare you show your face. Exactly. So, you know, you stumble into a scenario like that, you're going to potentially be... I mean, it's going to be one of the only scenarios where you're probably going to wish that you'll be raped. <laughs> what? As opposed where to being eaten. Where are we eaten. going? Where are we going with this? Anyway. Jesus. Apologies for that. All I'm saying is, be careful if you're in the great outdoors, people. We've all seen those films, so always have someone with you. Take a compass. Do you know what compasses are for? Find out what a compass is for. It'll help you not get turned around and walk in circles in the forest. Do you know what a compass is for? I'd... Did you just ask that question? Seriously. I, I, I don't know about today's youth. You know, How many people know what are your compass is used for? Think about it. Why would you use a compass in your everyday life generally? Unless you go orienteering regularly. If there is anyone out there who does not know what a compass is used for, please, I'm not sure why you do this as you'll clearly be ridiculed now. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, we could do with that laugh. Let us know. Let, you know, right on the Facebook wall. You know, go on Facebook, make that large, like the page. And then tell us how much of a puffin you are. Okay. Cheers. <clears throat> I'm sorry, maybe I was uh, doing them a disservice. We all know that a compass is used for stabbing no, no, people no. in maths class. Yeah, that's a pair of compasses. Said, hey, what's growing on? And we were talking about not becoming meals. Or uh, sexual exploitation devices for hungry backwards cannibals. But now we're going to move on to slightly more positive topics. Mike, do you like a good ramble? Nature ramble, how are you for those? Love it, mate. Yeah? Yeah, I love outdoors. So, you no, know, I mean, do you like make it a part of your general routine? Like, do no. you. Do you <laughs> no, I didn't think so. So. Do, do you enjoy going on a long walk? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to them, I just don't have time for them. But I mean, should you go on a long walk? Is should I? Do you mean no, should I? I mean, no. I meant, as you didn't let me finish, I said, should you go on a long walk, i.e., oh, okay. if it hypothetically happens, <laughs> hypothetical being the operative word, do you uh, do you get do you drive something out of it? You don't just go on a walk because you think, oh, well, I could do with a bit of exercise. Do you actually, like, really enjoy having a long walk once in a while once in a while sometimes I think it's good to get outside and just go for a walk you know it, by yourself maybe you know gives you some time fresh air gather your thoughts yeah exactly think about stuff you know I think if, it, if you're out on a, sometimes I, if you're sat at home there's too many distractions you can't you know you do you really get time to stop and think because you always keep yourself occupied and whatever you're occupying yourself with how gets your attention And but if you're out for a walk, long walk by yourself you've not really got anything to do other than to to think and get your head straight I'd go as far to say as uh, I actually think it really aids in things like depression I think more people should take a long walk more often you wouldn't believe like you say how many things can get on top of you mentally I'm not just talking about necessarily the great outdoors I'm talking about if you're in an enclosed space all the time you know if you're going to work stressed at work come home you you know you're sat in your room or in your lounge and it's the same space all the time and it's the same routine and you can't kind of think outside of the box because you know you're in your routine you've got to do your chores you've got to make your meal you've got for God's sake people just take long walks more often I know this is difficult if you live in a city but just find a green space wherever you can. We're lucky. We're fortunate. We we live in quite a rural area. We have a lot of green spaces around us. And I've got to say, the best thing I like about getting, going on a long ramble is, like I say, disappearing off the map. That's the big thing for me. I love being able to go somewhere and knowing that no one actually knows you're there. Because yeah. you do feel a lot of the time in modern society that you are being tracked that people kind of know what you're doing generally, where you are. Who I like it. Yeah, I like the idea that people can't get hold of you, that you you vanish off the map just for a few hours, maybe. But anyway, 
No, I totally agree with what you said. Get your thoughts together. It, the thing is, you know what your internal dialogue is? It's where the voice, you know, yeah. the voices yeah. of reason in your head have, like, debates with each other. That's the way you work through your, you know, your problems or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, I feel really bad about this. Oh, um, because such and such said this. Did they really mean it that way? Should I talk to them? Should I not? You know, you work, you work through things like that in your head. And literally, and it sounds stupid, but your mind and body are more connected than you think. For your mind to have space, your body has to have space as well. If you're enclosed in the same four walls all the time, your mind's going to be enclosed in walls as well. If that doesn't sound too uh, philosophical. It did sound a bit philosophical, but you're right. Uh, wow, that's uh, that's unusual. Yeah. To say something like that. Don't get used to it. Long walks in the rain. I love them. When really? it's really pissing it down, like really hammering on you. Like you can really feel it pushing your shoulders down. <laughs> love it. Normally that kind of Seriously? when when yeah when that's happening and there's a thunderstorm, love walking it. I'm sure I've mentioned this before. Uh, to be honest, I, I can see love it. walking when there's a thunderstorm, thunder lightning. Do you know? Go walk into a field, find some high ground, just just you know, perch yourself there, look out over the fields, maybe over a city where there's. Mm, especially because you know that other people th- aren't going to be out. Yeah thunder and lightning so you, you, you know you feel more like an adventurer yeah you're alone in this space yeah it's raining it's wet but it's normally refreshing when there's a storm and I, I love it I love it do you know what I figured out the other day as well Mike and again I think this is something that limits us and I know it applies to me I don't know about you but what happens is once I've had a shower and got dressed and everything have you noticed I don't know if this is just me or if it happens to other people you kind of go out of your way to avoid getting dirty, sweaty, wet. wet. Yeah. A- and it, it really bothers you, if you get what I mean. So if yeah. you're eating anything, you're really careful not to get it on your clothes or whatever. But as soon as you break the barrier, you know, you realise it's not so bad. And eventually yeah. you start to enjoy it. And it's like really liberating. It, well, it's like, say, uh, before a football match. Like, get yeah. get dirty first. Get yourself dirty so you're not afraid to do it in the match. Yeah. Well, okay, afraid's the wrong word, but yeah. Oh, not afraid, but yeah, don't, so you don't think twice about doing it. Exactly. Slide around, roll around in the mud. If you're a keeper, you know, dive around. Get, yeah, like get, for it, yeah. Get your shorts dirty, and then yeah, you won't like, think twice about doing it in a game. Yeah, because, no, I remember, it, it had, yeah, it happened to me before before in a game. Yeah, like Mike said, afraid's the wrong word, but there is a certain mental thing to it where, like, okay, say it started raining in the game, it's kind of bucketing it down, and you and you look at the ground, and you think, oh, it's like churning up and whatever, and you think, oh, fuck's sake, I don't, I don't really want to get right into that. I don't want to get that s- slime all over me. Second, you uh, thunder yourself into a tackle, gets all up your leg, feels horrible at first, a couple of seconds, you think, you know what, I actually feel like I'm really been involved in this, and you think it's not so bad. I'll just do that again. It's the same, you know, you. Like I say, most of the time when you've just washed, you try and avoid sweating too much because you don't really want to smell pretty bad before the end of the day. But you go to a festival, you wake up in the morning, you haven't showered for 24 hours, and you wouldn't believe how liberated you feel just wandering around because you know that 80% of the people there haven't washed either. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. It's the same in the rain. I like in the rain. Okay, if I'm walking the dog, I'll take an umbrella. But like you say, if you're on a walk and it starts raining, at first, you know, you just turn the air blue, you're swearing every name under the sun, and as soon as it gets so heavy that you realise you're not going to avoid it, you just think, screw it. And in a way, like you say, it feels quite refreshing. Obviously, kind of get your clothes off after an hour or so to avoid getting a horrible cold, because it does get a bit clammy and whatever, but you know, don't be so afraid of getting dirty or cold or sweaty. Liberate yourself. Personally, I bloody love it. Well, there you go. I love getting dirty and cold and wet and sweaty, and I I love it. I can't get enough of it. I know. I and mean, then, I remember that time we went down in the public toilets, and you were like wallowing around in the urinal. Yeah, it's like fuck me, just rolling around. Yeah. Took then I took a shit in it <laughs> and rolled around in it <laughs> and rolled around in it some more. So and then you were brilliant. You, you went to that toilet that someone had uh, blocked up with uh, with a massive dump and. You you said um, I want to wash my hair. Stoke your, he- stoke your head in it and, and flush in. the toilet. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Love it. 
we'll be back with uh, more of this filth after Mike's favourite. Mike, what is it? Don't be a puffin. Listen to Late Night Large. Have you been orienteering, Mike? I have been orienteering. It's quite cool, isn't it? It is pretty cool. I it's like, fun. I like finding things and navigating your way around. Yeah, it's good luck. I might also recommend other outdoor activities, including uh, things like Go Ape. Have you been on that? No. That's brilliant. All kinds you, of zip wires. Yeah, you said about before. Ropes, yeah. I mean, that's a great way of getting messy outdoors. Obviously, quad bikes is another great way. Another thing that I would... Controversial topic that I will bring up. Hunting. Hunting, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Because, of course, going outdoors means you're going to come into contact with animals. Yeah. I mean, I would necessarily mind trying my hand at some hunting. form of hunting. At some point, hunting was an essential part of our makeup rather than just a hobby, if you like. Indeed. I also enjoy hunting for clunge. <laughs> Don't we all? I have a I have a crossbow ready ready and waiting for that opportunity. And shoot the helpless young lady in the leg. Exactly. And say, she ain't going I, nowhere. R- race over. Oh my god, what happened to you? I can't believe an asshole shot you with a crossbow ball. <laughs> let's uh, let's have that leg sin to. I've got a I've got well, a, I'll, let me see to that leg while you see to mine. My third leg. Yeah, uh, you see what I did. Misery style. But um well, we'll drag, drag her back to uh, drag her back to your room but misery style <laughs> keep her drugged up I do. constantly <laughs> as a sex slave I do have uh, a sorry though obviously that's not going to happen I do have a good story go on hit us with it about hunting hunting girls in fields okay no I wasn't hunting anyone <laughs> but there was a girl in a field oh god um was I'm procreation d- involved yeah and I'm not sure if my mum and my little brother are listening to this. They probably will be. They probably will be. You always give it the big in front of your mum and brother. I do always give it the big in. But maybe James doesn't need to. <laughs> mm. Why don't we just... Mother, if you're listening... Yes, please take James away. Or put your hands over his ears for the yeah. next 30 seconds. And, so. and maybe get him to do the same to you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say, I, I do have some fun experiences in the grey outdoors. Okay. I, I do remember being at a party and uh, meeting a girl who obviously thought, "Wow, oh, look at this guy. It's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Clearly she was on about me. One thing led to another. We ended up playing a lot of tonsil tennis. And as, you can, as you can imagine, those who know me, my hands were wondering. Oh, boy, oh, boy, were they wondering. And did she have a nice rack. We ended up walking, going finding this field, and uh, one thing led to another. And some items of clothing were lost, and uh, yeah, she 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 got a right room. Heard uh, there's noises during, and obviously not coming from either of us. Uh, just thought nothing of it. F- found out later that it was actually a sheep field. Uh, sheep in there with us. So that was. Can can I just say, you're a lovely young lady. How was her wool? Good, yeah. She, I, I was a bit put off by some of the noises she was making. Like, bah! <laughs> I, was <gonna> I, <laughs> uh, I wasn't too sure what that was about, but I thought, so, well, you know, each of their own. I've had some strange things in my past. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and obviously you were, <laughs> you, you probably thought it was a bit strange how she was on her hands and knees the whole time <laughs> that you uh, you were walking with her. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like you say, uh, any holes of gold. Um, I should just warn you that apparently uh, there's some pretty strange diseases that men catch off uh, copulation with sheep but anyway nothing I didn't already have of course uh, I'm sure you're immune to them you've had them so many times uh, something I like to do for sex and trees for shits and giggles close I like to uh, dress up a leather face and wander around uh, masturbate in public uh, again that's a different story I, I like to dress up like Leatherface uh, with with a big knife and wander around the woods until I kind of come to some kind of section of houses and just wander in front of their window a few times, <laughs> just to uh, see what reaction I get. That's quite fun. You strange man. <laughs> Either that or another fun thing is to, uh, like you say, uh, find a find a rural house in the, in a secluded area. Just just throw random apples at like the roof. <laughs> Has the same kind of effect. How mature? 
Yeah. <laughs> so but of course, I fun. wouldn't recommend that at a farmhouse because you you never know when you're just gonna y'all get shot, get lead in your buttock. Uh, what else can you do outdoors? Other than like sporting things, sporting things. obviously outdoors. We'll talk about that forever. I mean, obviously the fresh air, the, uh, the exposure to the elements, it just it does kind of make you feel alive, really. It certainly does. Um, and I I would advise to any of the listeners. If you haven't been, as I mentioned before, out in a thunderstorm, thunder, lightning, maybe you're scared of thunder and lightning, but what I'd say to you is man up. Go. What, what, thunder, lightning, pissing it down with that, you know, that heavy rain. Driving rain. The, yeah. Just just go. Just walk out in it. In the first, and yeah, it might wa- be a bit unpleasant, but once you reach a certain level of wetness, you're not going to get any wetter. Either and that, or you could, you know, you could just wear waterproofs. No, you just man up and you just wear normal clothes. <laughs> Right, and yeah. just go and just walk, just walk in it, enjoy it. Being in, and it is a really, the air in thunderstorms. I'm sure most of you know, would have noticed, is really fresh, and it's it's mm. good air. Good air. Good air. Good air. Good. You know, and, and the rain is refreshing. It's not necessarily too cold. And another thunder, way of lightning. Uh, get out in it. Another way of get getting that it. kind of fresh experience is, of course, to uh, sit in an oxygen chamber. But again, that's another story. But I hear that uh, that gets you high as hell. If you, of course, if you're worried, if you do, if you do uh, take part in Mike's little experiment and you're worried about being struck by lightning, just dress head to toe in rubber. You know, fishing gear is good. Waders, rubber, kugel, anorak. Or just don't wood. be stupid. It's not going to bloody hit you. <laughs> I'm going I'm to feel like a right twat if one of you does get hit by lightning now. <laughs> but if you do, please. You're welcome to be a guest on late night. <laughs> but no, seriously, I I'd advise you to do it. Uh, obviously, you know when when you get back inside, you know you want to get changed out your wet clothes. But you can I you can sit there for hours in the rain watching the thunder and lightning. Again, just contemplating your thoughts. I yeah. I've done it before and I bloody love it. I I you know, do you get back inside. I got get your clothes off quick. Jump in the bath. Just you know soak in the nice warm water. Get out. You'll feel refreshed and you'll feel brilliant. I got him out. I do love nothing more than uh, getting to the top of a hill and uh, surveying my kingdom. My kingdom. Well, Thank you. That's uh, that, that's an argument for another time. 